All right, so let's get started. Can everyone show me their hands? Waking up their hands, do a little jazz. These are called jazz hands when you shake them like this. All right, so let's get them ready. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Them. Lay them in your lap, lap, lap. Creep them, crawl them, slowly creep them right up to your chin, chin, chin. Open wide your little mouth. But do not let them in. All right, good job, guys. And then let's see if you're ready to hear a story, which we do. If you're ready to hear a story, wiggle around. If you're ready to hear a story, wiggle around. If you're ready to hear a story and you really want to show it, if you're ready to hear a story, wiggle around. If you're ready to hear a story, stomp your feet. If you're ready to hear a story, stomp your feet. If you're ready to hear a story and you really want to show it, if you're ready to hear a story, stomp your feet. If you're ready to hear a story, stick out your tongue. If you're ready to hear a story, stick out your tongue. If you're ready to hear a story and you really want to show it, if you're ready to hear a story, stick out your tongue. Let's see, let's do one more. Um, if you're ready to hear a story, shout hooray, hooray! If you're ready to hear a story, shout hooray, hooray! If you're ready to hear a story and you really want to show it, if you're ready to hear a story, shout hooray, hooray! All right, let's see. Oh, hi, Priyanka. Thanks for coming today. Hi, Brooklyn and Ari. Those are my nieces. I love you guys. I'm so happy you could come this morning. Who else? It looks like, oh, my mom has signed in. Hi, mom. I'm glad you could come and watch too. Um, great. So let's get started. So this book is kind of a fun book, but I'm going to need your help. So this book is a very interactive book, which means that I need you, I need you to help me with it. So to start it off, I need a little, little finger right here. Can you all go boop? All right, so this book is called Press Here. So let's see how it'll work. All right, so let me just get it a little backwards. All right, so it says ready, press here, and turn the page. So can everybody give me a little boop? Let's see what happens. Oh, <gasps> great. Now press the yellow dot again. Okay, let's do it in a little boop. Boop. Oh, <gasps> perfect. Now rub the dot on the left gently. All right, I'm going to rub it. Can you do a little help me out? I hope you're all helping me at home. What's going to happen? Oh, what happened? It turned red? Well done. And now the one on the right. Okay, let's give it a little. I hope you guys are helping. Let's see. Oh, it turned. What color did it turn? Blue? Wow. So cool. Fabulous. Now five quick taps on the yellow ones. Can you help me out? Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Hmm, what's gonna happen? <gasps> Whoa. Okay, five taps on the red one. Can we do it fast? One, two, three, four, five. <gasps> All right, we're gonna have to do it with the blue one. We'll do it slow. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. <gasps> Perfect. Now try shaking the book a little bit. So can everyone wiggle a little, give a little wiggle? What's gonna happen? Oh, oh no, they're getting scattered all over the place. Not bad, but maybe a little harder. Okay, let's do a little wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. So what, what's gonna happen to all the dots? Okay, there, well done. Now tilt the page to the left just to see what happens. Okay, let's tilt it a little bit. Hold on, tilt it a little bit. This way, <gasps> what? And then to the right a little more. All right, can everybody rock this way a little bit? <gasps> Excellent. Now shake the book one more time just to get everything back in order. Okay, one more big shake. <gasps> okay, guys, look, it looks like it made a pattern. Hmm, interesting. Try pressing down really on hard on all the yellow dots. Okay, we're gonna count them again. One, two, Three, four, five. Pushing down on them. Oh, I turned off the lights. Not bad. Now shake them up a little bit. Oh, okay. Pretty, isn't it? 
Now, can you try blowing on them to get rid of the black? So everybody, can you give me a good, like you're blowing out a birthday candle. Let's see if everybody blows on it. Let's see what's gonna happen. A little birthday candle. <gasps> Whoa. Hmm, maybe a little harder. Can you give me one more big birthday candle blowout? Whoa. Oops, that might've been a little too hard. Stay on the book up straight and make things go back again. Okay, ready? There you go, that's perfect. Now clap your hands once. Okay, everybody give me a big loud clap. <gasps> Whoa, whoa, clap twice, two times. <gasps> whoa, they're getting so big. Can we do it three times? <gasps> whoa, okay, now everybody just start clapping. Just give me a big round of applause. Let's see what happens to these dots. <gasps> whoa. Uh-oh, too loud. Quick, press the white dot. <gasps> Bravo. Good job. So it went back to normal, just to that little yellow dot. Good job. All right. I have to say, I, very funny. Outside my window right now that I'm looking behind the computer, there is a squirrel that is sitting on a fence with an entire hoagie roll. He has an entire sandwich roll, and it's very funny. I would show you guys, but it's just, it's cracking me up. He is just going to town on this whole sandwich roll. All right, let's see. <gasps> hi, Violet. Thanks for coming today. And Lucia, hi. Hi, Eddie. Thanks for coming. You're three years old. That's wonderful. Hi, Erica. I'm glad you could come this morning. And Sadie, thanks for coming. Welcome, welcome. All right, we are going to read some books. And a lot of these books have special words in them that rhyme. We're going to do some rhyming ones. And I really like this one. This one is a very silly book. It's called A Great Day for Up. The squirrel is cracking me up, guys. All right, up, up. The sun is getting up. The sun gets up, so up with you. Up, ear number one, and ear number two. Up heads, up whiskers, tails. Great day today, great day for up. Up, up, you open up your eyes. You worms, you frogs, you butterflies. Up whales, up snails, up roosters, hen. Up, girls and women, boys and men. Great day for up feet, lefts and rights, and up, up baseballs, footballs, and kites. Great day to sing up on a wire, up, up voices, louder, higher. Upstairs, up ladders, up on stilts. Great day for up Mount Dillamadilts. Whoa, look at them climbing up that mountain. Every day's Everybody's doing ups on bikes and trees and buttercups. Up, up, waiters, alligators. Up, folks, up in elevators. Up, up in, up giraffes. Great day for seals. Great day for up on Ferris wheels. Up, 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 fill up the air. Up flags, balloons, up everywhere. Up, 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 great day for up. Wake every person, pig and pup, till everyone on earth is up. Look at everybody. Except for me, please go away, no up. I'm sleeping in today. I read that one this morning because my little guy has been waking up at like 5 a.m., but today he decided to sleep till 7, so I was a very happy mom this morning. All right, let's see. Hi, Clements, and hi, Oscar. All right. Oh, Victoria Trail, you love that book? I love that book, too. I think you were talking about maybe press here. Oh, it's such a good one. Hi, Maya. Thanks for coming today. All right, so I have three more books, great. So this one's also kind of a silly one with a lot of rhyming words, um, and my little guy, Nikki, loves this book. He can't get enough of it, um, and it's called Dog on a Frog. I read this book so many times during the day because I th he just thinks it's really funny, and he likes to woof along with the doggies. So let's see. Hey, dog, get off that frog, said the frog. 
but I like sitting on frogs, said the dog. Frogs are all squishy and squashy, and when you sit on them, they go croak. Can you guys give me your best frog sounds? Croak. I usually do a ribbit sound, but this frog likes to say croak, croak. You know the rules, said the cat. Cats sit on mats, frogs sit on logs, and dogs sit on frogs. Well, I'm changing the rules, said the frog. From now on, dogs sit on logs, not frogs. Really, said the dog? Really, said the frog. Dogs sit on logs and cats sit on gnats. Ouch! I don't know what I said on, on gnats. What will bears sit on, asked the dog. Bears will sit on stairs, said the frog. So you can hear all the rhyming words in this, right? All the different animals rhyme with whatever they're sitting on. What will slugs sit on, asked the dog. Slugs will sit on plugs, said the frog. Slugs will sit on plugs, flies will sit on pies, crickets will sit on tickets, and moths will sit on cloths. I happen to like this little cricket. If you can see, he seems to, oh, sorry, backwards. Um, he seems to be a magician cricket pulling a rabbit out of a hat. What will leopards sit on, asked the dog. Leopards will sit on shepherds, said the frog. Leopards will sit on shepherds, and cheetahs will sit on fajitas. Yum, yum. You're really getting the hang of this, said the dog. I know, said the frog, and that's not all. Canoes will sit on canoes, pigs will sit on wigs, and boars will sit on oars. This is getting crazy. What will whales sit on, asked the dog. Whales will sit on nails, said the frog. I'm not sure whales will like that, said the dog. They don't have to like it, said the frog. They just have to do it. What will dragons sit on, said the dog. Dragons will sit on wagons, said the frog. Dragons will sit on wagons, mice will sit on ice, kittens will sit on mittens, and puppies will sit on guppies. Oh my gosh, look at all those puppies. They're pretty cute. What will canaries sit on, asked the dog. Canaries will sit on fairies, said the frogs. Canaries will sit on fairies, possums will sit on blossoms, hens will sit on pens, baboons will sit on balloons, and poodles will sit on noodles. Uh-oh, that poodle doesn't look very happy. He's crossing his arm. He's got kind of a frown on his face. They are, poodles aren't going to sit on noodles, guessed the dog. They are now, the frog smiled. Uh-oh, let's see. Hold on, said the cat. If dogs sit on logs and cats sit on gnats and bears sit on stairs and slugs sit on plugs, flies sit on pies, crickets sit on tickets, moths sit on cloths, Leopards sit on shepherds, cheetahs sit on fajitas, canoes sit on canoes, pigs sit on wigs, boars sit on oars, whales sit on nails, dragons sit on wagons, mice sit on ice, kittens sit on mittens, puppies sit on guppies, canaries sit on fairies, possums sit on blossoms, hens sit on pens, baboons sit on balloons, and poodles sit on noodles. What are frogs going to sit on, asked ask the dog. So what do you guys think? So what rhymes with the word frog? What do you think? Hmm. Frog. So the dog is sitting on the log. The frog could sit on the dog. What else rhymes with, with frog? Hmm. What do you think he's going to sit on? Let's see. These. That's a pretty nice thing to sit on. It looks like he's got a pretty sweet little beach chair right there. The end. You can see, I like the end page. It's got a lot of dogs doing this little cute dog doing a lot of cute little things. All right. Great. All right. So I have a few other stories. Let's see, which one should I do first? I'm going to do this one. This is one of my favorite ones. It's called Peanut Butter and Cupcake. And I like the drawings. You can see they kind of took pictures of real life things and made them into little wire guys. And those are the pictures in the story. It's kind of cool. So let's see. Peanut butter and cupcake. Peanut butter got a ball for his birthday. He was kind of bad at kicking it with his feet, but was kind of good at balancing it on his head. Still, it wasn't much fun playing with a ball all by himself. Want to play with me, he asked his mom. They had just moved to town and Peanut Butter didn't have any friends yet. 
I think you should go outside and find someone to be your new friend, she answered. Hmm, who's he going to find? Peanut Butter liked that idea very much, so off he went. It wasn't long before he saw a someone. Let's see who he sees. <gasps> Hello, I'm new here, and I'd like to play. Maybe now, maybe later, or even all day. I'll make you chuckle deep down in your belly, and we'll go together like peanut butter and hamburger? Hmm. That's a, that's a little odd combination. I'm sorry, said Hamburger, but I'm busy walking the dogs. Thanks for asking, though. You're welcome, said Peanut Butter. Maybe next time. And he kept on walking. I like this book. This book makes a lot of kind of funny little puns. You see he's walking his little hot dogs. Then he saw Cupcake playing by herself. He thought she looked sweet and might make a good friend. Good idea. Hello, I'm new here and I'd like to play. Maybe now, maybe later, or even all day. I'll make you chuckle deep down in your belly and we'll go together like peanut butter and cupcake. Mmm, that could be good. I'm building sprinkle castles, said the cupcake. You can stay and watch, but don't hit my castle with your ball or I'll be mad. Peanut butter didn't want to make anyone mad. That's okay, peanut butter said, and he kept on walking. Mm. Let's see. <gasps> Whoa. Then he saw Egg rolling down the path. Hello, I'm new here, and I'd like to play. Maybe now, maybe later, or even all day. I'll make you chuckle deep down in your belly, and we'll go together like peanut butter and egg? Hmm. Peanut butter and egg? That's funny. You're cracking me up, Egg said. And then he really did crack. Peanut butter didn't want the egg to laugh anymore, so he kept on walking. I have to say, this might not be the safest choice for Egg to be riding on a unicycle all the way up there. Yikes, a little bit of a daredevil, I think. He found someone jumping. Hello, I'm new here and I'd like to play maybe now, maybe later, or even all day. I'll make you chuckle deep down in your belly and we'll go together like peanut butter and meatball? 32, 33, 34, shh, I'm counting my jumps and meatball. 35, 36, 37, I'm trying to set a record. Peanut Butter whispered back, but I have this ball and 38, 39, 40, shh, said Meatball. Peanut Butter kept walking. Finding a friend was harder than he thought it was going to be. He's using a little piece of spaghetti for his jump rope. Smart thinking, Meatball. Then Peanut Butter saw another someone sitting under a tree, and that was good because he was ready to sit down too. Even though he was getting tired, he gave it another try. Hello, I'm new here and I'd like to play. Maybe now, maybe later, or even all day. I'll make you chuckle deep down in your belly and we'll go together like peanut butter and french fries. Mmm. Not right now, said french fries. I just remembered I'm supposed to help Hamburger with his hot dogs and I need to catch up. This book cracks me up. Peanut butter walked up to one more someone who was practicing his A- B, C's. You see? Some alphabet soup. But before he could open his mouth, Soup picked up a spoon and dipped it into himself and then showed it to Peanut Butter. In the spoon were the letters N and O. What does that spell, guys? N-O spells no. But I didn't see anything yet, said Peanut Butter. You didn't have to, said Soup. Oh, said Peanut Butter. How do you guys think Peanut Butter might be feeling right now? Maybe a little disappointed, maybe a little bummed out. Let's see. Peanut Butter found a bench to sit on. He was almost ready to give up. But as he sat there, so very sad, a new kid walked up to him. Hmm. <gasps> Who's this new kid? Hello, she said. Peanut Butter took a deep breath. Um, hello. I'm new here and I'd like to play. Maybe now, maybe later, or even all day. I'll make you chuckle deep down in your belly and we'll go together like peanut butter and jelly. Sure, I'll be your friend, said Jelly, but could you teach me how to keep the ball on my head? I'm only good with my feet. <sighs> Look, he made a new friend. So they taught each other what they knew and made each other chuckle deep down in their bellies. 
look. It wasn't long before their laughing made the other kids come over. They asked if they could play too. Of course, Peanut Butter and Jelly were happy to let them join in as his new friend knocked the ball around with their feet and their heads, and in one case, his buns. Peanut Butter chuckled deep down in his belly because they all went together like peanut butter and hamburger and cupcake and egg and meatball and french fries and soup and jelly. Look, they're all having fun. The end. I really like that one. All right, let's see. All right. Good morning, everyone. And I got one more story for us this morning. Um, I really like this story, and I really like this series. This author does a bunch of them. Um, it is called Rosie Revere Engineer. So I really like this one. Um, there's some other ones, too. Uh, so there's Iggy Pack Architect and... Uh, Oh, now I'm blanking on the other ones. There's a brand new one um, that came out recently and uh, Sophia Valdez for president. Um, I think that's what it's called. But these books are really great. I've been a big fan, a big, big, big fan. And I think they're even making some short chapter books now, which is super wonderful. Um, but they're really great. And it's all about a few different kids in um, this class that all go in this class together. So you can see, and if you look here, there's Rosie Revere Engineer, and there's Iggy Peck Architect, um, the little kid with the um, pencil behind his ear, and I'm trying to remember the other one's name. Um, it's this girl with the polka dot dress. I'm trying to remember the book series. Uh, I'll remember it. Give me a sec. Let's read the book first. So, this book is called Rosie Revere, Engineer. This is the story of Rosie Revere, who dreamed of becoming a great engineer. In Lila Greer's classroom at Blue River Creek, young Rosie sat shyly, not daring to speak. But when no one saw her, she peeked in the trash for treasures to add to her engineer stash. And late, late at night, Rosie rolled up her sleeves and built in her hideaway under the eaves. <gasps> wow, look at all this cool stuff she has. That's a lot of stuff. Alone in her attic, the moon high above, dear Rosie made gadgets and gizmos she loved. And when she grew sleepy, she hid her machines far under the bed where they'd never be seen. You can see all the cool stuff she has to build. Looks like she even built in, looks like there's a wild thing from where the wild things are. When Rosie was young, she had not been so shy. She worked with her hair swooping over one eye and made fine inventions for uncles and aunts, a hot dog dispenser and helium pants. Those are pretty cool inventions. The uncle she loved most was zookeeper Fred. She made him a hat to keep snakes off his head from parts of a fan and some cheddar cheese spray, which everyone knows keep the pythons away. Look at this cool invention. And when it was finished, young Rosie was proud. But Fred slapped his knees and he chuckled out loud. He laughed till he wheezed and his eyes filled with tears. All to the horror of Rosie Revere, who stood there embarrassed, perplexed, and dismay. She looked at the cheese hat and then looked away. I love it, Fred hooted. Oh, truly I do. But Rosie Revere knew that could not be true. She stuck the cheese hat on the back of her shelf and after that day kept her dreams to herself. Oh, seems like she's a little discouraged. And that's how it went until one autumn day, her oldest relation showed up for a stay. Her great, great aunt Rose was a true dynamo who'd worked building planes a long time ago. She told Rosie tales of the things she had done and goals she had checked off her list one by one. She gave a sad smile as she looked to the sky. The only thrill left on my list is to... Why? But time never lingers as long as it seems. I'll chalk that one up to an old lady's dreams. Let's see. 
That night, as Rosie laid wide awake in bed, a daring idea crept up in her head. Could she build a gizmo to help her aunt fly? She looked at the cheese hat and said, no, not I. But questions are tricky and some hold on tight. And this one kept Rosie awake through the night. So when dawn approached and red streaks lit the sky, young Rosie knew just how to make her aunt fly. She worked and she worked till the day was half gone, then hauled her cheese copter up onto the lawn to give her inventions a test just to see this ridiculous flop it might turn out to be. Strapped into the cockpit, she flipped on the switch. The heliocopter sputtered on and twitch. It floated a moment and whirled round and round, then froze for a heartbeat and crashed to the ground. Then Rosie heard laughter and turned round to see. The old woman laughing and slapping her knee. She laughed till she wheezed and her eyes filled with tears, all to the horror of Rosie Revere, who thought, oh no, never, not again. Will I try to build something to sputter or spin or build with a lever, a switch or a great gear and never will I be a great engineer? Hmm. I have a question, kiddos. When great things are invented or when people invent all different things that have happened, do you think they invented it and it was perfect the first time they ever made it? I don't think so. I think when you're trying new things or even when you try like, you know, if you want to learn how to ride a bike or a skateboard or maybe you play soccer for the first time, are you really good at it the first time you do it? No way. She turned around to leave, but then great, great Aunt Rose grabbed hold of young Rosie and pulled her in close and hugged her and kissed her and started to cry. You did it! Hooray! It's the perfect first try. The, this great flop is over. It's time for the next. Young Rosie was baffled, embarrassed, perplexed. I failed, said dear Rosie. It's just made of trash. Didn't you see it? The cheese copter crashed. Yes, said her great aunt. It crashed. That is true. But first it did just what it needed to do. Before it crashed, Rosie, before that, it flew. Your brilliant first flap was a raging success. Come on, let's get busy and on to the next. She handed a notebook to Rosie Revere, who smiled at her aunt as it all became clear. Life might have its failures, but that was not it. The only true failure can come if you quit. You gotta keep trying. <sighs> they worked till the sun sneaked away in its bed. Aunt Rosie tied her headscarf around Rosie's head and sent her to sleep with a smile ear to ear to dream the bold dreams of a great engineer. At Blue River Creek, all the kids in grade two build gizmos and gadgets and do hickeys too. With each perfect failure, they all stand and cheer, but none quite as proudly as Rosie Revere. You can see they're all trying to make stuff. The end. And I just remembered, so you can see here is Aggie Pack Architects. That's another one of these books that's really wonderful. And this one, this little girl right here, she is Ada Twist Scientist. That was the other one I couldn't remember in the beginning that I remembered when I was reading the story. And that's another really great book to read. Um, and they're both by this woman, Andrea Beatty. Great. Uh, oh, somebody said it. Yes, you are correct. Ada Twist Scientist. I remembered it. I was reading the story. I was trying to remember. I knew it was a rhyming word. Um, so that is it for us today. Um, thank you for coming. Um, I always love doing these story times.